Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Lauren and today I am going to be talking about all of the books that I read in the month of February. So overall, I would say that February was a good reading month for me. I read seven books and it came out to a total of 2,819 pages. I read two three-star books, two three-and-a-half-star books, two four-star books, and one five-star book. If you haven't noticed yet, I'm pretty stingy with high ratings. I'm very hard on books. So to have read two four-star books and one five-star book in a month, that's, that, that makes for a pretty good month for me. I also noticed um, a couple themes in the books that I read this month. The main theme that I noticed was school or books set in academic settings. I read a couple of um, space operas and I also read a couple of maybe I would call them sort of dystopian speculative fiction type books. So I think today the best way to discuss these books will be to sort of go uh, theme by theme. The first book that I'm gonna talk about is Bunny by Mona Awad. This is what I would call kind of a fusion between literary fiction, contemporary, and horror. Um, it is set in a, um, a exclusive New England college and it follows a young woman named Sam who has been accepted into the MFA program for literature. A lot of the beginning of the book is her sort of um, watching her peers from afar and they are very, they're very different from her. They're kind of like yuppie Deb types of girls. The main action of the book is uh, our protagonist being kind of invited into this clique of girls and how it escalates and grows really toxic. This is actually a pretty complex book. Uh, a lot of people see this book as being kind of weird or they don't really get it, but um, I don't know that I would call this book weird so much as it is disorienting. It feels very um, surrealistic, especially as the book progresses. Overall, I did really enjoy this book. I think uh, it had a lot of really vivid imagery in it and it, it was really a ride. Like I enjoy books that kind of make you question what am I reading? What, where is this going? Like what on earth is going on? And this book definitely had a lot of strange twists and turns that I really enjoyed. Um, however, that being said, I think that this book maybe overreached a little. I think that the author perhaps tried to do a little bit too much with it. There were so many themes and there, it was just trying to say so much. By the end, a lot of things in the book were explained, but there were some things that weren't. And that kind of bugged me because I feel like you should, if a book is going to be kind of out there, I'm totally cool with that, but I either want you to completely explain it or make all of it out there. Like don't explain anything. But like I said, it was such an unusual book and it really just kind of kept me on my toes. So overall, I did enjoy it. I gave this book three and a half stars. If you are someone who enjoys a book that has a lot of uh, twists and turns and is really disorienting, then you might really enjoy Bunny. So the next book that I read that is kind of a school academic setting was Binti by Nnedi Okorafor. Um, I actually, I read this entire book, which is, uh, this is a bind up of the entire trilogy plus a bonus story that goes with it. But for the sake of, of this discussion, I'll just talk about the first, the, the first book in the series. Um, it is about a young woman who is, she's been accepted to this university. It's on a planet that's kind of far away. Uh, it's set on the spaceship where she and a bunch of other young people have, that have been accepted into this school, they're on the ship and they're headed to this school. Um, in the course of this journey, a hostile um, alien group attacks the ship and the story focuses around um, Binti trying to fight for survival through that. I gave it three stars. 
And the reason I didn't give it a higher score is because the it, the story is only 50 pages long and a lot happens, like a lot happens in 50 pages. So uh, the pace was kind of off for me. I also, I felt like some of the dialogue that occurred in this book was not particularly, uh, it was a little, I hate using this word, it's so low to me, but it was kind of clunky and um, it, it just wasn't, it was a little unnatural and it didn't flow well. Um, I don't know. I, I think I've also, I've just kind of, I've read quite a few space operas at this point and this is just not the best space opera that I've ever that I've ever read. I think though, this is a really good entry point if you have never read sci-fi or haven't read much sci-fi and want to try out a space opera, you may really enjoy Benting. The third book that I read this past month that is kind of an academic setting type of book was On the Shoulders of Titans by Andrew Rowe. This is the second book in a series, the uh, Arcane Ascension series. It is a high fantasy. Um, the first book I read last year, it was one of my favorite books of 2020. There is a character named Corin Cadence who lives in this world where um, in order for people to um, gain magical powers, they have to enter these really huge towers and they have to um, sort of face these challenges in order to receive a mark it's called the Mark of Attunement, and that mark grants them magical capabilities and magical powers. In the first book, Corin is, uh, he is searching for his older brother who went into the tower five years previously and never came back. The second book is sort of about um, information that Corin has gathered about his brother um, and him sort of continuing to try to figure out what happened to him. Uh, there's some of it is set in the school setting, not as much as the first book. The second book is a lot about him making magical items, him learning how to make more and more things, how to use his magic better. There are some really high intensity, high action scenes, but most of this book, and this is a thick book, it's over 700 pages. Uh, it's really about Corin learning how to use magic. If you like to learn a very, very intricate and very technical magical system, you'll probably really like this. Uh, it got to be a little bit too much for me. It's so in depth that, you know, <sighs> it would kind of lose me after a while. I was really expecting, I think I was really expecting a lot more action from this book because honestly, the first book, it was also, it really talked about the magic system a lot. And that's what I really liked about the first book. It really explained the magic system well. So I, but I had felt like, you know, in the first book that was more world building. And then in the second book, now that we understand the magic system, the action will kind of take over and it, it, that it would be a much more like high adventure, high action. But the second book went a whole lot deeper into the magic system. So it wasn't, it just kind of wasn't what I was expecting. That being said, the action scenes that did take place in the book, there weren't a lot of them, but they were really, really good. Overall, I gave this book three and a half stars. I think I gave Sufficiently Advanced Magic, the first book, I think I gave it four and a half stars, maybe. This one, I gave it three and a half stars, which for good reads, I, I rounded it up to four. It wasn't as good as the first book for me, but it was still a really enjoyable read. Um, as far as the next book in the series, which by the way, I don't know how many books there are going to be in the series. I, it's going to be a while. I, it, this, this one was, it was a lot of information to digest. So if and when I read the third book, it's, it's not going to be for a while. Another book that I read this month was To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. Uh, this is a novella. I think it kind of goes hand in hand with the Wayfair series, which I, I own, but I haven't read yet. I don't want to say too much about it since it, I mean, this is like, I think it's maybe 150 ish pages, uh, short books. So I don't want to give too much away, but this is a sci-fi novel. It is in space. It's on a spaceship. It's not super dramatic. This is a very quiet story. It's not overwhelming in technical details by any stretch of the imagination. It is about a crew. I think, uh, maybe 
I think it's like four, a crew of like four or five people. And they are on this ship, this research vessel that is visiting a handful of different worlds. And they are doing this just for the sake of exploration and for the sake of learning. And each world that they go to is vastly different from the last. They're really interesting, very vividly described. Uh, and it's also about them sort of their communication with earth and how that gets interrupted and then trying to come to terms with what they're, what is going on on earth and trying to decide what they're going to do and how they're going to react to that. Um, like I said, this is, it's a quiet story, but I loved this book. I absolutely love this book. Um, this is my five star book for the month. Sci-fi is my favorite genre. This is the kind of book that I read sci-fi looking for. This book, it, um, it kind of beautifully walks this line between like really intense intrigue and like you feel very like anxious, like are, are the characters going to be okay? You feel that tension, but at the same time, it makes you feel very hopeful about the future and about space travel. Like it's, it, you feel enchanted by it. This actually in that way reminded me a lot of this. And it also reminded me of this and of this. So if you like any of these shows, there is a good chance you will enjoy this book. The feel of this, it feels like these shows, like just scientists exploring the galaxy and learning and that sort of a thing. If you enjoy um, books that make you excited about space travel and learning about other worlds, I highly recommend To Be Taught and Fortunate. Another book that I read this month was Mort by Sir Terry Pratchett. This is a Discworld novel. It's a fantasy. It's like a kind of satirical, humorous fantasy. Uh, this was written fourth, and it is the first book in the Death subseries. So the main character is Death. He's the Grim Reaper. His name is Death. It's about Death taking on an apprentice and how his apprentice Mort, this teenage boy, kind of really kind of screws things up. Um, it's a very funny novel. I love Death as a character. Um, he decides that he doesn't want to be the Grim Reaper anymore. And after he selects Mort to be his apprentice, he goes and gets a job as a line cook at a diner. I loved all the characters in this book. Uh, the characters are very distinct and very well established. I think that Pratchett did a really good job with the character work in this book. One of my favorite characters in this book, though, is Death's Horse. His name is Binky, and uh, he may be one of my favorite, like, animal companion type characters in a book. I just, I love Binky. I read a couple of really heavy books this month, which I'm going to talk about next. Um, and I read this book, actually read them in between these two books. And it just, it was a breath of fresh air. It was so fun. This kind of satirical humor, it works for me. The only thing that I, that I wasn't super wild about with this book is that it did, it could have used just a little bit more grounding. That being said, I gave this book four stars. I thought it was great. I will continue with the series. And I don't know if you're into books that are kind of fantastical, satirical, humorous, and you haven't checked out Discworld, you haven't checked out more, I highly recommend that you do. The last two books that I want to talk about, and I, I think I'm going to talk about them in relation to each other because... Well, it'll become clear as to why I want to talk about them in relationship to one another, but that is Red Rising and Battle Royale. Red Rising is a sci-fi novel by Pierce Brown, and it I actually read this. Uh, it was a group read, and apologies about this. And uh, in my February TBR video, I said, I think I said that I was reading it with Shelf Space. 
I don't know. I, that was incorrect. I, my mouth got ahead of my brain and I didn't, I didn't know this I said the wrong thing. I was actually reading it. This was a group read, a channel read with the Library of Alexandria. This book is set in a futuristic, a colonized Mars. And the society is broken. It's a caste system. Our main character, Darrow, is, uh, he's in the lowest caste, which is the Reds. And they are, they're essentially, they're like slaves. They're prisoners and they don't know that they are, but they are the people that the society, they're the legs that society stands on. They live underground and they mine and they don't know what is going on with anyone else in this society. They're just like free labor for everyone else. This book is about um, Darrow suffers a huge loss. One of his loved ones is is killed at the hands of one of the golds who is at the top of this caste system. It's about him infiltrating this system, um, this school, this institute, in order to sort of seek seek revenge, seek justice. And going into this institute, he doesn't realize that it's essentially like a it's a fight to the death situation. It is compared to Hunger Games and it is quite similar to Hunger Games. It has its differences, but the trope is the same. It is a last man standing fight to the death kind of a situation. Um, I really dreaded reviewing this book because it is an extremely well loved book. I did not love this book. Um, I thought that it was okay. Um, I think that th this book had some pretty serious issues for me. So the debut novel for Pierce Brown. Um, and to me, it read, it read like a debut novel. Um, okay, the, there are three main issues that I have with this book. The first one is the pacing. Um, and I think this is actually, for people who do have a problem with this book, this is, this is why. Um, what happens in the beginning to sort of set Darrow on this path for revenge and justice, this event, this murder, this all happens in the course of like five chapters and the book is 44 chapters long. So the event, I'm just going to call it the event that sets it all in motion is it, it's, it happens really quickly. I didn't really get any sort of connection to the character um, that was killed and therefore I didn't buy into the rest of the story. Um, I think that this book probably should have been, I think it would have worked better for me if it had been split into two books with the first book being all about the event and um, sort of uh, explaining the world, building those backstories, like actually getting me attached to the character that is killed. Uh, and I feel like if that had all happened and then the next book had been about Darrow going to get his justice, I feel like it would have worked a lot better for me. Um, another reason that this book didn't work for me is that it felt a, it had sort of a little um, kind of a wish fulfillment quality to it. The character, the main character, Darrow, I've heard referred to a lot as a Gary Stew, which actually that terminology was new to me. A Gary Stew, in other words, is a character that succeeds instantly at everything. Um, he is just a natural born leader. He is, he knows all the strategies for fighting and war just instinctually. Everything he does, everything he touches just turns to gold. He never really fails. People flock to him. And you know, he comes from a, this underground society and, you know, not to say that someone in that position wouldn't be good at things like coming out and, you know, moving up in society, but it is just, it's instant. The last thing, the last thing that bothered me about this book is that I could tell the parts of this book that the author was excited to write about and the parts that he just kind of wanted to get through the stuff that was glazed over. Uh, it shouldn't have been glazed over. It would have helped me become more attached to the characters. So much important stuff was like glossed over that I just, I did not buy the story. Um, that being said, the action was really good in this book because it is like that fight to the death type of situation that you can't help but get wrapped up 
but get wrapped up in this book. This is a sci-fi book, no matter how you look at it. This is science fiction, um, but this would be a good crossover book for people who enjoy fantasy. This book refers to a lot of sort of uh, ancient Greek and Roman concepts. Characters have name or named after gods and stuff like that. So it has a distinctive fantastical flavor to it. So this, I think, is a really good book for people who want, who love fantasy, but just they want to try out some science fiction. Being someone who has read a fair amount of science fiction, this book was just, it was okay for me. I enjoyed reading it, but not enough to continue with the series. Honestly, it just, it was okay. It was okay. It was fine. Um, I gave this book three stars. And I read this earlier on in the month, but unfortunately for Red Rising, I later on in the month read Battle Royale. Now, let me tell you about Battle Royale. Battle Royale is the book that this, as far as what I understand, this is like, this is the trope namer, Battle Royale. That is what these books are, Red Rising and Hunger Games. This is the pioneer in that trope and in that concept. This book was written in 1999, so it was it was written before both The Hunger Games and Red Rising. Um, and uh, just, and to be fair, I th those are the only three books that are this concept that I've read, so I cannot help but compare them to one another. This story is set, this is kind of a, um, speculative alternative fiction, alternative historical fiction kind of book. And uh, the setting of this, it's in Japan in this alternate future history where um, the Axis powers in World War II won the war. So Japan is one of the winners um, of World War II and it the, the uh, government in this alternate Japan is a, it's a totalitarian government. It's authoritarian. And this book is about uh, this program that the government has where they kidnap classrooms of high school students or middle school students. I think they're about 15 or 16 year olds. Um, and they are kidnapped and they are taken to this remote location in this book. It's, it's a small island. Uh, then they're taken there and dropped off and they are forced to fight each other to the death. I want to talk about the weaknesses of this book first. Uh, first of all, a main weakness of this book is not the book's fault. This is a translation. This book is originally written in Japanese. Um, this it's, it's written by Kushin Takami and this translation is by, uh, Nathan Collins, I believe. Uh, so the, the translation, the, it could get a little awkward, like the dialogue and things could get a little awkward. Overall, though, I thought, I think that the translator did a good job. Also, I think this book, it is kind of, it is a, a little bit of a product of its time, um, having been written in the late nineties. There, there's some sort of sexist elements about this book. Uh, this book is told from the perspective the, of 42 characters. It is a classroom of students. Half of them are boys, half of them are girls. And there are only two female characters that I feel like were meaningfully developed. Uh, it was mostly, it was really more about the male characters and them sort of handling this situation and just sort of, you know, some sexist views on on uh, gender and uh, homosexuality and just some different things. It wasn't too overbearing, but it was present. So it, I feel like it kind of dated this book a little bit. Um, but that being said, this book, this was so, oh, this book was so good. Um, this book is, if you've read Red Rising and you thought that it was brutal, it is nothing nothing compared to Battle Royale. If you are a sensitive reader, this book, I can guarantee 100% is absolutely not for you. That is a huge warning for this book. If you can't handle 
if you can't handle intense violence, I mean, it's almost like sla it's like slashery. Um, if you can't handle that and very detailed descriptions of people killing each other, you will not be able to handle this book. I think that one thing that makes this book superior to both Red Rising and Hunger Games is that in those two books, the characters are more or less strangers to each other. In Battle Royale, this is a classroom of students who are friends, and a lot of them are best friends. And they are forced into this situation where they have to murder their best friends. Each of the students, whenever they are brought onto this island, are given a weapon and sent out to fend for themselves. I think it's in a few days if they haven't completed their task and played this game and killed each other, then they will be killed. Like it, it's either it's either you play it and someone wins or everyone is killed. So they have no choice. You, you go to the perspective of every single character. You see the POV of every single character. So you get a sense, although you, it's, it's almost impossible to keep them all straight because there are so many characters. Um, you see how different characters are reacting to the situation in different ways. Some of them are, they're just, you know, this is what I have to do. I have to, if I want to live, I just have to do this. Some of them are, uh, they are in terror over the situation. They are hiding and incredibly, incredibly afraid. Every single student has a different perspective. It, what this book does is it makes you really think about how you would feel in this situation if you were forced to kill people that you love. This was not a perfect book. It really, it wasn't a perfect book, but I, you know, I, I will never forget having read this. This, it was, uh, it was, it was very troubling, but uh, it was definitely, definitely worth the read in spite of its flaws. Um, and this, yeah, this left an impression on me and um, having read it, you know, just to, to come back around to Red Rising, I, I liked Red Rising well enough. When I read it, I thought it was okay. I thought it was fine. Um, but then reading Battle Royale, it just kind of like, if we're being honest here. Yeah, I gave this four stars. I, I don't know, I'll be curious to see. Things can change after you think on them. So it'll, it'll, I'll be interested to see how I feel about this book, you know, a couple months down the road. But if you have a strong stomach and you like slashers and uh, slasher stories, and you like books about the fight to the death trope, and you want to, you want to uh, read the pioneer in, in that trope, in that field, pick up Battle Royale. On a side note, if you have read ba Battle Royale um, and you liked it, you should really consider, and you haven't watched the show, you really need to watch Alice in Borderland. This is a show that it's actually, uh, it's based around a manga that I can't get my hands on in English, so there's that, but... Um, Alice in Borderland took a lot, and I mean a lot of uh, inspiration from Battle Royale. It is also incredibly brutal, incredibly bloody. <laughs> don't go into it. Don't watch the show if you are a sensitive viewer. Don't watch it. It will, it will really mess you up. But if you if you are okay with that kind of stuff and you liked Battle Royale, watch Alice in Borderland. And or if you have watched Alice in Borderland and you really enjoyed it read Battle Royale. All right, my friends, I think that that is it for me today. These are all the books that I read in the month of February. If you have read any of these books, I would absolutely love to talk to you about them down in the comments. So please just talk to me down there. If you enjoyed this video and you aren't subscribed yet, I hope you'll consider subscribing. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you next time. Bye.